Well, hello, everyone. And I want to welcome those who are here with us today live for this very special webinar. Now, today we have a very special guest who will be teaching us about topics near and dear to all of our real estate investor hearts, how to dramatically lower our tax bill bills and shield our assets from lawsuits. Now, Bruce Mack is an in-demand national speaker, real estate investor involved with well over $90 million in transactions, author and founder of Platinum Trust Group. He's also featured on the cover of our latest issue of REI Wealth Magazine. So I'm really excited to have him here with us today. Now, as a licensed financial advisor and trust expert, Bruce empowers investors to achieve significant tax mitigation plus bulletproof asset protection through his proprietary IRS compliance trust. Over 80% of his clients are real estate investors, ranging from owning just a few doors to well over 3,000 units. Now, Bruce educates on the ideal alternative solution to 1031 for capital gains treatment, as well as the best entity for holding assets that's hands down superior to LLCs or corporations. Bruce has exceptional relevant training for newbie investors, as well as seasoned professionals with multi-million dollar portfolios. We're very happy having him with us on today's webinar to share his valuable expertise in helping you shield your assets and significantly mitigate your taxes. You will want to stay tuned in for the entire event today so you don't have to keep paying Uncle Sam one nickel more than you absolutely have to. And also for a complimentary offer to meet Bruce one-on-one. -on -one. Welcome to the show, Bruce. Welcome, everyone. Well, thank you so much, Linda. Uh, I, I really appreciate the opportunity to speak to uh, your audience. I know they're a very target specific audience, that being real estate investors. So most of you are either newbie investors or you're experienced investors with SFRs and or multifamily. I will tell you, uh, I myself have been a very avid uh, real estate investor. Uh, in a three year period of time, I bought rehabbed and flipped over 160 properties I've personally been involved in over $92 million worth of real estate transactions with both commercial as well as residential. So this is a subject and a group, a subset uh, of uh, uh, folks that is very near and dear to my heart. Uh, and I will also say that's probably why uh, when I take a, a look at who our trust clients are, 75% plus of the clients that we currently have are either part-time and or full-time real estate investors. So uh, you are you guys are right in what I would call Main Street in terms of the uh, uh, mix of people that currently have trusts and that are a part of our group. I am a trust advisor, a licensed financial advisor, real estate investor, business consultant, and yes, a speaker as well as author. So over the next coming minutes, I'm going to take you through 
what the trust is all about, we're going to first of all start off uh, and talk about the asset protection uh, component to the trust, which is as important, if not more important, than the tax mitigation component, because if you lose the asset, you lose everything. Uh, and, and this is something we're going to talk about. We're going to erase a bunch of fallacies that are out there about different types of entities and how they operate and how they may or may not protect your assets. And then we're going to move into uh, the second part, which is going to be talking about the tax mitigation component that comprises what the ability of the trust is in terms of mitigation on both passive income as well as uh, capital gains. So we're going to get started. At the end, I'm going to give you guys an opportunity, should you wish to, to get a one-on-one. -on -one. You'll have an, a link to my personal direct calendar, and we're going to waive the normal consultation fee, which is $250, should you wish to have a one-on-one. -on -one. And again, that will be with me directly, and we'll show you how to get onto my personal calendar. That'll be the last slide, so you don't want to leave. Stick around to the end so that you can take advantage of that complimentary consultation. Oh, heck, there we go. Uh, platinum trusts are a must for real estate investors. Our proprietary copyrighted trust offer asset protection, tax mitigation, generational wealth transference, and complete privacy. A common trust that you may currently own, many of you do, is called a living trust, a living trust, which is known or a living will, all the, one and the same. They're created during your life, and they're created for two distinct purposes. Probate avoidance, which helps you name who the beneficiaries are and spells it out in great detail. And they also are great for probate avoidance. Now, unfortunately, they do not and cannot, by design, offer asset protection or tax mitigation. So we have many people who bring these types of trust to the table when they get started with us and we incorporate their living trust or their living will into our trust. So this is something that we accomplish all the time and we work with people who have those types of trusts. So let's talk about what our trust is versus the other options that are out there. So working left to right, you may have a C or an S or an LLC as an entity. You may even have a holding company. You may utilize land trusts and or, as I said, you may currently have a living will or a living trust. So let's talk about the fact that our trust does have the ability to exclude, ergo, uh, eliminate capital gains, uh, defer income tax, Avoid lawsuits, avoid judgments, liens, reaching businesses or you personally. Avoids probate. Now, again, living trust, yes, it does that. Uh, avoids gift tax, avoids estate tax, ensures the beneficiary's assets, their transferability. It is and has been designed to be a multi-generational wealth accumulation tool because of one of the provisions that uh, the trust has, which is the dynasty provision. And it avoids annual fees. So at a quick overview, now you can see what we're talking about, the strength and the abilities that the trust provides. And we're gonna start to break it down into specifics. We offer ironclad, protection for your business, assets, and for you personally. Asset protection is a must. Just when you think everything you have worked so hard for is going great, at a snap of the fingers, yes, you can lose it all. I've seen it happen. I myself got hit in a lawsuit many years ago and lost $175,000. It was not pretty. And there's no reason for you to have that kind of loss because if you choose to move forward with the trust, this is something that can't happen, won't happen because of the asset protection capabilities. 
Statistically, property owners are liable for injuries incurred due to hazards associated with their property, whether it's a home or a business, or potentially you may own both. You may own a car wash or dry cleaners or whatever other type of business, along with being a part or full-time real estate investor as well. Slip and falls annually, unfortunately, the number one common personal injury. And since 1980, injury uh, lawsuits have increased by 30%. About 25,000 of these happen every single day. And the most common one is slip and falls. You may have asbestos or lead paint lawsuits, uh, asbestos exposure lawsuits we've seen go in, in excess of $30 million. And according to Measley's litigation report, mesothelial I always have problems with this so let me say it slowly mesotheliomia claims awards can be as much as 2.4 million dollars not uncommon and uh lead based paint a very common uh, problem which can create serious illness and have you be exposed uh, to lawsuits from those one that you've all heard about are toxic mold. And in this particular case, uh, Kellen Gorman received a $13 million settlement from a toxic mold lawsuit uh, and is reduced to needing 24-7 care, unfortunately, for the rest of his life. Statistically, according to IFG services, Americans have a one in three shot of getting sued and according to the American Medical Association, if you were a surgeon, a two and three shot. Now, from the studies that we have done, we have seen that real estate investors, yes, have a big fat target painted on their back. And we see that chronically, real estate investors are sued over 50% of the time. So what we're saying is you stand better than a one and two shot of being sued at some point in time in your real estate investor career. So having a trust and being able to, if you will, utilize the trust as armor can stop a lawsuit even before it gets started. Most lawyers take these types of cases on contingency and they're paid 30, 40 or more percent of the winning. But if they know that they're coming up against our type of trust that does offer titanium vault asset protection, they're going to likely go the other direction because they know that they're never going to get inside the corpus of the trust to be able to get a lien, levy, or judgment executed. There are 153,000 lawsuits filed each and every day. It's a staggering amount of lawsuits. The average business lawsuit, if you, you should be so unlucky to be on the other side of one, it's going to cost you 77500 This is why I'm saying, again, the best offense is having a good defense. And just by having a type of trust like we've got stops the fact that a litigating attorney, once they realize what they're up against, they're going to likely turn to hill, pack up their suitcase, and go someplace else. Currently, there are over 91,000 PI uh, lawyers. Most of them work on contingency, as I was saying. So they're going to be doing asset searches. They're going to be doing what they're going to be doing to evaluate whether it's going to work for them. And if it looks like a very difficult case in terms of being able to get an award, they're going to pack up and go someplace else. Multi-million dollar lawsuits that you may or may not be aware of. Here's a dog bite that was a $6.9 million award. The hot coffee spill that most people are aware of uh, with McDonald's, the lady who got burnt from that uh, co hot co uh, coffee was awarded $3 million. What people are not aware of is the fact that 2.7 million of the $3 million award was in punitive damages. Now, here's a fact that, again, most of you are not aware of. Punitive damages 
are not covered with insurance, whether you have a general liability suit and or even if you have an umbrella, even if it's a multi-million dollar umbrella. So the exposure for punitive damages can oftentimes eclipse or be much more than the actual base lawsuit award amount. Again, another reason that having one of our trusts is going to protect you even in the event that there is a punitive damage award. Closely held LLCs and corps do not protect you. The owner, and here's why. The allegation is a third year a law student allegation, they're going to allege that if you have an LLC, and many of you do, you have one LLC for all your properties, or you may have multiple LLCs or, uh, uh, and, and where you have an LLC for each property, or you may put two or three properties uh, into one LLC. These are all strategies that we have seen over the years and unfortunately, LLCs are like Swiss cheese. They really do not protect you. Uh, and we have the facts. I'm going to show you that in just a moment. They're going to allege alter ego to be able to pierce the corporate veil, which is highly successful and an easily winning argument to get inside the LLC. Corporate formalities is another way to get inside the LLC by showing that you have not kept your corporate formalities up to speed, and therefore you have what they call a sham LLC, and therefore they can pierce the corporate veil. Small business owners also do things like mistakenly write checks or use the wrong credit cards that are associated with the LLC for personal expenses, again, negating the legitimacy of the LLC and therefore being able to pierce the corporate veil. One of the studies that I like to talk about is the one that uh, we're showing here that shows a Wake Forest uh, a law school did a review when they found that 46% of the cases when litigated and they use the alter ego saying that you've created a facade in order to control the shareholder, they've been able to successfully uh, pierce the corporate veil. This is horrible. And again, it's an easy allegation to prove uh, with small or closely held entities. Now, I've never met the real estate investor that has a widely held entity. Uh, the difference falls at roughly 35 people. So unless there's 35 uh, owners of your LLC or more, then it becomes a widely held entity. But likely it's you or it's you and your a spouse, or it's you and a partner, in which case it's still considered in every sense of the word to be a tightly held entity and as such is very vulnerable to being pierced, uh, a, as you see, almost a one in two shot utilizing that alter ego. Now, here's something that many of you are also not aware of. It's called reverse veil piercing. Most states recognize reverse veil piercing. Uh, California is absolutely one of those states that does recognize reverse veil piercing. So many of you think that having your property isolated in one LLC is going to give you all the asset protection that you need because worst case scenario, they're only gonna get what's in that one LLC that's being litigated against. But let's take a scenario. Let's say you have a, million dollar uh, judgment against you. And the contents, when you add up everything that's in the one LLC is only $250,000. Well, this would give the court the jurisdiction to go against any other LLCs that you might have and or other entities, whether they're C's or, or S's, and be able to pierce those veils to be able to get what's called a satisfaction of judgment. So they might have to go to a second one or a third one to get the balance of the $750,000 to get them the full million dollar award. This is ugly. And this 
absolutely dispels the notion that many of you are flying under that worst case scenario, they're only going to get what's in that one LLC. Not necessarily the case, certainly not necessarily the case in California. We want you to be able to shield and protect your business, yourself, and your family against lawsuits, judgments, levies, liens, and any claims that could become against you, as well as divorce. This is what our trust can safeguard against consistently. Ironclad asset protection for your personal assets also is a component that our trust delivers on a consistent basis. So in this case, a friend of mine uh, who lived in Brentwood, actually still lives in Brentwood, uh, uh, California, was driving home one evening. He got into a bad car accident. He was not drinking, uh, but he was found to be liable. And he also had a multi-million dollar umbrella. Unfortunately, what ended up happening is he got slapped to be made a case of for a $250,000 punitive damage above and beyond uh, the base award amounts. He did not have our trust. He ended up paying $250,000 out of his back pocket to satisfy that judgment. I want to make sure that I hammer this point home because it does not need to be you in the future. This individual, his son, got into a very bad accident, and his son was 17 years old at the time. And as such, Matt was therefore liable as the adult that they looked to in this case. Interestingly, he was getting harassing phone calls from the uh, attorney's side that was, would be litigating against him. He finally had enough of it and spoke to the litigating attorney and told him, look, I've got a, a uh, trust. I also have the car in the trust, which of course you would put all of your assets in the trust to protect them. And in that case, after he informed him about the trust, what do you know? N Matt never heard from the attorney again. So this is not atypical this is the type of thing that sends uh, litigating attorneys down the road because they know they're never going to be able to execute a lien, a levy, or a judgment against the trust. Properties and assets cannot be seized. Property and assets held in a properly constructed trust cannot be seized. Further, the trustees and the beneficiaries are not liable for the debts of the trust if there ever, ever were any debts from the trust. As I told you, I personally lost $175,000 from a bad uh, house deal. I'll briefly tell you about it. Uh, when I was living in Nevada I, and buying uh, pre-foreclosure properties, uh, I actually had a door knocker at, at one point who was a previous client who wanted to come to work for me. Uh, and he was a great guy. He actually ended up become, coming to work for me and I'm going to digress for a moment and tell you the story about Bill. Bill had a $150,000 tax lien on him. Very unfortunate situation. I found out about his house and I found out that Bill had uh, filed his taxes, but didn't have the money to pay his taxes. Well, I knew about a very obscure uh, law uh, or code from the IRS that says that if you file your taxes and you are 280 odd days away from filing, that if you're in a personal bankruptcy uh, in a chapter seven, you can discharge the tax liability and have that go away. So I said to Bill, look, you filed your taxes, you couldn't pay for your taxes. Not only do you have a lien on you, but you have a lien on your house. Now, I am certainly willing to work with you, give you the money to pay for the uh, bankruptcy. At that particular point, the bankruptcy was like 750 bucks. And I said, if this is what you want to do, and if we're able to get the taxes discharged in the bankruptcy, then we can try and get to work on your behalf to get the, the tax lien that's on the house removed as well, and therefore free up 
the $150,000 worth of equity that he had. So that's exactly what happened. He emerged from bankruptcy. We were able to get the lien removed from him. And then over a period of a couple of months, we were able to get the lien removed from the house. He And we ended up doing an equity share where we split the profits. So Bill ended up with around $75,000 in his pocket. And we did too. So it was a great win-win uh, utilizing this approach. So Bill wanted to come to work as a as a uh, door knocker and tell the world. And it was great because all Bill did was tell his story at the front door to pe people that were in pre-foreclosure. He door knocks, talks to this guy. Guy says, I can't come down. Uh, I'd like to meet with Mr. Mac, but my car is in the shop. Bill offered him a ride. So he came down to the office. We sat down and several cups of coffee later and a couple of hours later, the guy said, I want to do this because you're going to pay for my relocation. You're going to completely rehab the house. You're going to be able to get top dollar for the house. Uh, you're going to take care of getting the house sold. And then what we'll do is we'll back out expenses and split profits. He loved it. We did the paperwork. And a week later, I got served with a massive lawsuit. In that lawsuit, the guy alleged that we, first of all, we kidnapped him. Well, come on. We offered him a ride down to the office. He also alleged that he was forced under extreme duress to sign the paperwork. Again, another pile of baloney. And then he alleged that he was highly intoxicated at the time of signing. Well, I'd like to say that he was as sober as a judge. He was drinking coffee the whole time, and he was certainly not intoxicated. So I go to my lawyer and I say, what to do? And he said, well, you've got two choices. And I said, what are they? He said, the first choice is that you end up deeding back the property and walking away from the deal. I said, okay. He said, but I would highly caution you against that. He said, because if you do, and then the house goes to foreclosure, which it invariably will, because if he had the money, he wouldn't have gotten to where he is only a couple of weeks away from foreclosure in the first place. And I said, and if he if the house does go to foreclosure, I can assure you that this is the kind of guy he's going to amend the complaint and then he's going to come after you with even more vengeance with a wrongful foreclosure as a part of his allegations and potentially take everything you have worked so hard for. I said, okay, what's choice number two? Choice number two is to be able to uh, work with the guy over a period of time, reinstate the loan for the tens of thousands of dollars that he's behind, uh, pay forward uh, and get current on his electricity and utilities and his pool guy and keep current on his gardener and uh, homeowners insurance, everything. Basically, you take over total operations of the house, keeping it running until hopefully at some point in time, you guys can uh, come to an agreement that is going to be acceptable to him and one that you can live with as well. And I said, well, what else have you got? And he said, well, that's just it. There is nothing else. It's either choice A or choice B. Well, I took choice B. And choice B ended up costing me over $175,000. Guys, you don't want to be in this situation. I've been there. I've done that, been to that rodeo. And if you had a trust or if I had a trust at that particular point, I can assure you that I would have deeded him back the property and he wouldn't have had an ability to come after me and get anything at that particular point because we have never in the history of the trust and with the type of trust that we have uh, constructed there is no way you can have a lien a levy or judgment come against and be collected against me personally and or against the business and that is a real life case of what can happen and we just don't want to have happen to you so with our trust it is not subject to tax liens, levies, 
uh, issued against beneficiaries of trustees, divorce, alimony, child support, creditors, governmental agencies, third party claimants. It is not subject to court's jurisdiction or turnover orders except for fraudulent conveyance. So the one time that the trust is problematic to get set up is if you've currently, uh, I'll give you an example. Let's say you're currently in a lawsuit and now you've heard about the trust and you want to quick like a rabbit, move all your assets from you personally or your, your LLCs into the trust in order to protect them. Uh, I have to tell you, it's too late. You can't do that because you're currently being litigated. So if you were to get a trust and you were in the middle of litigation, then there could be a motion to set the trust aside because of what's called fraudulent conveyance. Now, this is something that when people ask me, Bruce, when's the best time to get a trust? I ask them if they're currently in litigation. And if they say no, my common response is, well, the best time to get a trust is today because unfortunately, nobody knows what might happen tomorrow. The trust is not a person. In all states, entities, whether they're C's, S's, or LLC, are recognized as the equivalent of a person. All courts' lawsuits can be filed against people or the legal equivalent of a person. The trust is a contractual trust, and therefore it is not recognized as a person. Therefore, a specialized trust cannot be sued, needs to be thrown out of, uh, out of court. There is one of the provisions of the many provisions that are in the trust is the spendthrift provision. It's a critical element of the document. In is there is no spendthrift corpus that can be penetrated to reach the corpus again, unless there has been a ability to prove fraudulent conveyance. So let's talk about Medicare and the trust. Uh, with our trust, income received into the trust is excluded from the qualification calculations of uh, Medicare or Medi-Cal. If you're in California, uh, assets in our trust are exempt from the asset recovery program. This can be a huge plus depending upon where you are and what your personal situation is uh, and medical needs are. Let's talk about tax mitigation. Before we do, I'm going to move backwards uh, one quick uh, moment and talk about Proposition 19. Those of you who live in California, Proposition 19 has been a bugaboo because you know that if you change title, uh, you're going to uh, be subject to recalculations on uh, property tax and the basis of what the property tax is uh, uh, recalculated to where your property tax could be minuscule today, but if you want to uh, have your heirs take over the property, this could create a huge problem for tens of thousands of dollars on an annual basis to your heirs. We can discuss this, and this could be a subject that uh, you'll want to earmark and bring up. If you are in California, uh, we have a absolute winner way to take Proposition 19, and even if uh, you're looking to have your heirs end up with the property, not have to worry about the Proposition 19 recalculations uh, for property tax. Enough said on that. Let's move on to tax mitigation. If you're planning to sell your property or properties in your home or any of your assets, uh, we have the ability to exclude 99 to 100% of the capital gains taxes used in IRS compliant trusts real estate investor versus dealer. Now you may have heard of being a dealer. And if you're doing flips, especially dealer status could be invoked. Uh, if so, that would be a bad day. If you have a trust, this is not something you need to concern yourself with. But if you don't have a trust, it is something you absolutely need to be aware of because you're looking at capital gains, you're looking at ordinary income. If you end up getting cast as a dealer uh, or 
loss generated on the sale of the property per statute 1221A1. This also includes the ability, should you be cast as a dealer, to have to incur self-employment taxes of an additional 15.3%. Medicare surtax, AMT. And by the time you're all said and done, this could easily be more than 50% of your profits. You're also, if you're cast as a dealer, precluded from doing 1031s should you want to and or utilizing self-directed IRA funds or seller financing. Guys, in a word, you don't want to be cast as a dealer. If you get our trust, that cannot happen. No need for 1031s. Uh, the ability to exclude 99 to 100% of capital gains taxes utilizing IRS compliant trusts. 1031s, to me, are nothing more and nothing less than a deferred fuse tax bomb. Yes, if you use, do a 1031, you're not going to have uh, the tax on that property that you're selling today. You're kicking the tax can down the road but unfortunately, you're kicking it down the road, maybe five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. But nonetheless, you're kicking it down the road. And then when you sell the next property, you're going to end up having twice the tax problem and maybe even more than you would have had today. Because if you're a believer like I am, the taxes are going up and they're not going down, then that rate that you would have to incur in the tax bomb problem that with the delayed tax views could be significantly worse down the road. So faced with the choice of, would you rather defer the tax and have it be a future problem, or would you rather incur no tax because all the tax, uh, the taxes on capital gains are eliminated? Obviously, the tax elimination program is the better way to go. And this is what we're talking about when you get one of our trusts. Legally mitigate your annual taxes, defer taxes legally, protect uh, trust codes and, and UPIA codes, Universal Principal and Income Act codes. The trust defers and minimize income and estate taxes to the fullest extent that the IRS allows, zero gray area, zero capital gains, and simplify the accounting process. Now, tax mitigation is legal. It's a fact. Any attempt to reduce, minimize, or alleviate taxes by legitimate means is permissible. Having good tax legal representation is everything. As noticed, which I'm going to now jump into, that 60 of the largest companies, including Amazon and Netflix and IBM, paid no taxes on the pre-tax income of $79 billion. And I'm sure you would agree that this was an outcropping of having good legal and tax advice. In fact, uh, in two case rulings, the Edison a California store uh, uh, stores ruled that persons may adopt any lawful means for the lessening of the tax burden of on income taxes. And in the Weeks versus Sibley case, the courts ruled that a spendthrift trust organization is not illegal even if formed for the express purpose of reducing or deferring taxes. In fact, we do believe uh, and fully embrace full transparency in the fact that the trust does not conceal or misrepresent all income and expenses shown that are tied to the following tax returns, whether it's a business tax return, whether it's a trust income tax return, or whether it's a personal tax uh, return makes no difference. Uh, I'm glad to report that we have been audited. Be wary of somebody if they say they've never had an audit. We would much rather say that we have survived an audit. We had a gal about a year ago, uh, not this August, but last August, trust client. Uh, she went through an audit. She's got roughly 70 plus properties. And the audit was for two years actually prior to the year that she uh, got her trust. So she went through the audit. That's what she was pulled for, uh, for that previous year or two previous years actually to having the trust. 
Uh, they went through everything and the uh, audit came back, no change, best possible case scenario. So then they audited the following year and the same result went through, came back, results were no change. Then she was audited for the first year that she had the trust. She implemented the trust in January of that year. And she went through that, uh, they went through that audit. And as it would have it, that year came back, no change as well. So we have survived an audit. Uh, the audit came back, no change. One of the things that our clients get, should you decide to move forward, is also a million dollars worth of audit protection insurance. That's just one of the deliverables that clients get. But I can tell you, successfully, one of our clients has been through an audit, came back, no change, very positive result. And back to uh, the business tax scenario, in this particular case, Mr. Bezos and Amazon paid zero on $11 billion in profits, and they even received a $160 million refund. So what are we saying here? What my takeaway is, is that big companies that have deep pockets can pay and do get great results in being able to mitigate their business taxes and having the right structure and the right type of trust can also yield the type of results that you're looking to achieve. What do these millionaires have in common? Whether it's Joe Kennedy or Mitt Romney or Donald Trump, they've all established different trusts to be able to mitigate their taxes. Matter of fact, you may remember uh, that Romney very possibly uh, had some election problems because he shared with the public that he only paid 15% in taxes with the type of trust that he had utilizing a defector grantor trust. Billy, this is an article from uh, the Kennedys in Forbes magazine. Uh, this is a reprint from 2014. And right in the article, it said, capital gains taxes could potentially be deferred for forever. Well, in our trust, our trust does have a means to an end. Taxes are deferred on passive income Passive income would be things like, well, maybe you might have notes uh, that you have. Certainly all your rent and lease income, that's passive income. And passive income can be and is deferred, if nothing else, until the trust distributes. The, so the question is, well, when does the trust distribute, Bruce? Well, the trust distributes in accordance with the rules of perpetuity, which state the tr that the trust will automatically distribute 21 years to the day after the last sole sur the death of the last sole surviving heir to the last sole surviving beneficiary. This is why, and this is part of the dynasty provision within our trust, that it's meant to inure multi-generationally and could last quite literally for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years because you will end up uh, with the trust You'll have your beneficiaries, which will likely be your children if you have children, then uh, supersede, or I should say, follow you and will be successor trustees and so on and so forth generationally until at one point in time, there are no more kids and the holders of the trust grow old. They die, 21 years happens, and then the trust distributes. Any taxes at that particular point, we've actually got our trust structured now will invariably go to a, a charity of the choice of the trust at that particular point that you pick. If it's good enough for the Rockefellers, well, according to Forbes magazine, Rockefeller family still maintains a substantial fortune due to the fact that they have had and continue to have uh, trusts that, op that they operate. I saw this one day. I just had to take a picture of it. I, I was watching TV. Even Camilla Harris keeps her assets in a tax advantage trust. Now, many expenses that you would think uh, the trust can't pay, actually they can pay, and they are far superior to having 
your standard deductions. I'd like to talk about for a moment, house, your house. Uh, many of you own a house or you own a house uh, along with the bank. And currently the only uh, write-off that you have is on the mortgage interest portion of your mortgage. Well, when we move the house from you personally into the trust, then the trust pays for all the expenses. Let me give you some examples. 100% of the mortgage payment can be paid by the trust. 100% of the property insurance paid by the trust. 100% of the utilities, including the internet, paid by the trust. Uh, if you have a gardener or landscape uh, person, that's paid for by the trust. If you have a pool, a pool maintenance person, paid by the trust. Heck, 100% of the homeowner's insurance uh, 100% of the home furnishings for repair and replacement, even if you do a renovation for potentially hundreds of thousands of dollars on the home, that is all trust expensable. So as you can see, just taking that one little slice to show you what is accomplished versus standard tax returns, uh, you get a huge benefit when you have the trust. Uh, another one is, well, let's just briefly talk about it. Uh, uh, education, that is a, a, a huge component. You may have kids and the children may be under 21 uh, years old. 100% of their food, 100% of their clothing expenses are paid by the trust. Also education uh, for preschool, uh, uh, for elementary school, if you put them in private school, high school, all trust expensable. And when you get to college, 100% of their undergraduate, graduate, and potentially should they attend postgraduate studies are all attributable and paid by the trust. So I think you're now starting to see some of the power that the trust truly has to be able to take over and pay for your life style and requests. Also, uh, the trust can pay for uh, objects that you utilize. When I say objects, cars, jet skis, RVs, so on and so forth. So these are all things that the trust can and will pay for in the future should you decide to move into the trust environment. So college tuition. Uh, and let me talk about how the trust creates a trust expense versus a taxable distribution. So say you've got your 19-year-old daughter and you want to have the trust pay for their, uh, for their tuition. Simple. You've got two ways to do it. Number one, you could pay for it where the trust cuts a check directly to the Office of Admissions, and that's going to be a trust expensable uh, uh, expense, or you could write a check directly to your beneficiary, i.e. your daughter, and now say to your daughter, put that check in your checking account and then go and pay the office of admissions. Well, that would not be the right way to do it. And if you did do it that way, then she would also need to receive a K-1 for the taxable distribution at the end of the year. But why would you ever want to do that anyhow? just have the trust pay for it. And therefore there's no K-1 done. And that shows you the right way to do it, utilizing the new trust way versus, versus the old way, which would create a taxable distribution. How do you get money out of the trust? There are a number of different ways. Well, first of all, you're gonna convey your assets to the trust. I call it, this is where we take your planes, your trains, your automobiles, your jet skis, your RVs, your stamp collections, your fine jewelry, your fine art, your houses, and we convey and do what we call bills of sale to the trust. Now the trust owns the assets and we do the same thing with your business. Frankly, one of the things we do, depending upon how many properties you have, likely we'll create a business trust and then we'll have separate divisions. And each one of those divisions is, is like having a series LLC but much stronger from an asset protection standpoint. 
And because these are not filed, these, uh, uh, if you will, these separate uh, components, these separate uh, uh, divisions, uh, you have superior privacy than you would with a land trust or superior privacy that you would have with an LLC, which is readily accessible. So this is the way to do it. This is the way to uh, work having your trust set up. And then you can utilize the trust to pay for your lifestyle, whether it's cars, whether it's homes, whether it's yachts, whether it's purchasing another business, whether it's purchasing more properties. These are trust expenses. And this is the way to utilize the trust to be able to maximize uh, your dollar return. You're paying expenses for beneficiaries, such as, as we said earlier, education, medical, maintenance, as well as support. The investment in the trust, uh, should you decide to move forward, is also a trust expense. The present administration, what's it doing? Well, we all know that they're increasing taxes and they've created inflation, which of course is a hidden tax on everything. Uh, you may or may not be aware of it, but in 2026, the uh, current $12.9 million uh, cap uh, on estate taxes is scheduled to be $6 million. So for those of you who have larger estates, uh, should you not get a trust, then you're going to absolutely be subjugated to the estate tax cap. And that could take the uh, worth of your estate and quite literally chop it in about half because of the state taxes uh, for, for your uh, state could be, will be 40, 50 or so percent. Again, uh, I must uh, say I am not a tax uh, CPA. I'd say always consult with your tax professional, but I can pretty much guarantee you they will back me up on the fact that the estate tax cap is looking to take a 50% haircut in 2026, which could be a very bad day for people who don't have a trust because your estate is not going to distribute. Again, it's going to inure multi-generationally. So this whole notion of estate taxes after you pass will not come into play with your beneficiaries having to bear the brunt of this pot potential uh, tax bomb that's coming a lot of people's way. Assets in a trust, zero capital gains. You may have stock accounts. You may have uh, crypto accounts, whatever. Again, we will convey and we will sell those assets to the trust. Now, the mere fact of conveying and selling the asset to the trust, whether it's personal property, uh, which we would utilize a basis for, or whether it's uh, other types of properties, such as stocks, such as notes, such as anything else, we would use what's called the book value or what it was that you paid for it when you paid for, for it in the beginning. And that's what we would use as what we call ground zero. Now, people get the wrong idea when I say we convey and sell assets to the trust that that's going to create a taxable event. We're selling the ownership. We're selling the name on the account. That's what we're moving. We're not actually cashing in anything at the time that the trust is set up. Now, the day after, if you decide that you want to do some liquidation of some of your assets, maybe it's stocks or maybe it's uh, maybe it's crypto or maybe it's a house that you want to sell, that's great because all capital gains because they are now assets of the trust, are, as we said earlier, eliminated. More on that when we have a one-on-one, -on -one, but this is the ideal solution uh, for you. Uh, you may have a uh, house or uh, maybe several houses that are in your portfolio that you're looking to sell and you've been thinking about it, but one of the things that has held you back is getting killed on the capital gains. The trust is the perfect solution. 
Zero capital gains on the growth or sale of trust owned assets. The sale of assets to the trust are non taxable events. This is what I was talking about. When you sell the assets to the trust and you convey them over, you're not going to be hit with a taxable event. Unlimited as uh, amounts can be sold. So there's no one lording over you saying that you can only sell X amount of assets to the trust. There is no cap. Unlimited amounts can be sold and moved into this into the safe environment of the trust. Um, I've been written up in several magazines. This is one of them. This goes back uh, to uh, 2020, 2022, uh, when I did an article in Apartment Management Magazine, and we talked extensively about Proposition 19 and the reassessments there, uh, uh, therein. Uh, more recently, the impact of Prop 19 without a trust, if you transfer your home into the uh, to your children or your grandchildren today, uh, they will get stuck with the assessment fees on an ongoing annual basis. And this is just a quick little FYI. If the average assessment is 1.25% from the property assessor's office, if you have a million dollars in pro uh, profit and you get that reassessment, you're looking at 12,500. If you've got 10 a million dollar portfolio, uh, you're looking at passing down a $125,000 a year tax burden that you don't need to if you have our trust just because of Proposition 19. Again, if this is a situation, you're in California, you've got some legacy properties, we really need to speak because we have a solution. Prop 19 uh, in California with our trust as long as the beneficial interest does not change, there cannot be a reassessment. This is really good news. And again, we have a solution. We'll talk about it in person. Most recently, and Linda talked about it at the beginning, uh, this is the new uh, REI Wealth Magazine. Uh, there's an article that uh, I was lucky enough to be featured in. This is gonna be coming out in the next couple of weeks. And it talks about many of the things that we discussed over the last uh, hour uh, that you can get information on by reading the article, which I would highly encourage you to do. But I would also highly encourage you to get a one-on-one -on -one complimentary consultation. Uh, we talk about generational wealth transference on that call and building your legacy. And they've been an effective vehicle for passing on wealth to future generations. They minimize the state taxes due to the waterfall effect created from the trust from one generation to another. Yes, there is a dynasty provision, multi-generational, useful in sheltering assets and divorce settlements and uh, for from uh, credit creditors that can easily last hundreds of years, as we discussed earlier. They do provide maximum privacy, as we also discussed, not subject to public record because we're going to be utilizing this separate divisional concept to be holding your properties as a way to shield uh, from general public record. Look, what people can't find, they can't sue. And what people aren't aware of, they don't want because they don't think you've got. So this is the ideal structure to keep you, if you will, flying underneath the radar. So again, I show you this chart as a quick recap uh, to the benefits where you have the Platinum Trust, which is all yeses on the right, and whether you have a C, an S, an LLC, whether you're impl implementing currently even a holding company strategy as an additional level of asset protection, you may also be implementing and utilizing land trusts. And certainly many of you currently have a will, a living will uh, or a living trust. None of them give you the asset protection and certainly not the tax mitigation that can be achieved by utilizing our trust. So we have multiple strategies, whether it's a personal slash family trust, a business trust, private family foundations, and a number of other strategies that we can and do implement depending upon what the situation mandates for you. And this is why I say there is no such thing as a one size fits all. We really need to chat one on one. And we because you have gotten to this trust because of Linda and her reach, this is what we discussed 
offering you a complimentary consultation at no charge. I always like to ask the question, what would your future look like if you're able to control what you earned? Well, here's an opportunity to be able to do exactly that. So let me put this up. Uh, this would be if you've got your cell phone, whether it's a droid or whether it's an iPhone, uh, the perfect way to get onto my direct calendar is you can actually take your phone right now and hold it up to the computer and open up the camera and then just click, uh, press on the camera and the camera will take you to uh, a link that you can click on, which will take you directly to that one-on-one uh, -on -one personal calendar that I maintain or take a picture of this, in which case after the call, go to bruce.platinumtrustgroup.com. That will take you to my direct calendar. And if neither of those, the either the QR code or going to my direct calendar link, which is that bruce.platinumtrustgroup.com, if you're having any issues there, feel free. You've got the number to my direct cell, which is the 702-371-2345. And again, my direct number is 702-371-2345. I'm sure that you can use the QR code or the booking uh, direct.com link. But if you are having problems, feel free, give me a call. We'll uh, get one of my assistants uh, uh, on a call with you and we'll we will book a one-on-one -on -one consultation where we can sit, chat, understand what your needs and objectives are and put together a plan that's gonna work for you. I'm gonna turn this back over to you, Linda. I want to thank you uh, for your time and the opportunity to sit with your group and and uh, chat with them about the trust possibilities. And I think Linda may have stepped out. She had messaged me earlier. Ah, well, if she took off, that's fine. Uh, Daniel, uh, I think let's just do this. I know we ran long this evening. People want to get to dinner or on to what they're doing. Guys, you have uh, the information. You have the ability to now get uh, the complimentary consultation, please take me up on it. And it's not right for you. It, it, may, it, it might not be right for you. It's not for everybody, but it's for many, many people. This might be and likely is the ideal solution. We just need to sit down and construct the, the right components and put them together for you. I wanna thank each and every one of you for sticking with us and being with us this evening. And I look forward to seeing you on a one-on-one -on -one call and thank you very much and have a great night.